Let's continue on now, uh, talk a little bit about the flight plan. I'm not going to dwell an awful lot on this, uh, uh, simply because I don't use it all that much. I do my, most of my navigating with the uh, external nav source, uh, which is my 650, so uh, I uh, use it just a little bit. But let's talk about it uh, uh, just enough to get comfortable and get familiar with it, and because uh, there are some very good, good features in it. The flight plan pages, uh, you can use them for destination information. Uh, there are differences between the internal or the external flight plan. Uh, it's easy to just see at a glance they're uh, color coded. Internal is blue, external is yellow. Let's talk a little bit about the differences between them and navigation with the HXR. And the CDIOBS soft key for selecting your different nav sources. There is a dedicated flight plan soft key on the bottom, so let's just punch it. And now what that's going to do is that brings up the active flight plan that we are flying on right now. So let's punch flight plan. And you'll notice it is yellow at the top. That immediately tells me that it's an external without even having to read external. It's just an external flight plan. I'm going direct to Front Royal right now. Uh, it is defaulted to my destination airport, the direct to. Now if I want to look at the details of Front Royal, all I have to do is uh, punch the right knob. It'll highlight the box. I can, since there's only one leg on this flight plan, that front royal is already highlighted. So let's punch the button. It'll make the details active in the bottom right down there, and it brings up the details page of front royal. This, we've looked at this earlier, but it tells you the airport elevation, the identifier, the timeout, the runways, the the uh, uh, remarks about the airport if you have the ADSB weather it's available and your frequencies are settable to your other radios if your HXR will send back and forth frequencies. Down at the bottom you can go to the direct to with the internal navigation if you are you can pull up the list of plates or you can pull up your terminal area forecast. You can also copy an external to an internal flight plan uh, by using the left knob, just highlight copy as you can see annotated above the uh, on my finger on the right side there, and just push the right knob. And that will ask you, do you really want to inter overwrite the internal flight plan? Well, yes, we do. So, And now we are, you'll notice that it's blue and it says internal up here. We're, uh, it's a different destination here. I've, I've switched slides, but you'll, it's the same thing. We're going to direct to Gainesville here internally. And you have all the options down on the bottom. Uh, you can go direct. Uh, you can find stuff that's near here. You can clear the flight plan. You can return it to the sequence mode. Uh, <clears throat> there's a direct to button where you can exit. And one thing to remember here, I've got this big yellow box in the middle. As long as your HXR navigator, i.e. the autopilot, etc., is being fed by an external GPS, you can do anything you want to these buttons down at the bottom, and it's going to have no effect on the navigation of the airplane. If you want to use these buttons down at the bottom, you have to be using the internal or something the GPS or the uh, GT, GRT HXR recognizes as an internal GPS. Some of the way people have got their 496s, 696, 796s wired to the HXR, it recognizes it as an internal navigator. But just be advised that the HXR has to think that it's navigating on its internal GPS in order for all the flight plan buttonology to work. The CDIOBS soft key down at the bottom uh, not only lets you uh, uh, set bearings and, and uh, radials into your OBS, depending on how your navigator is selected, it also allows you to select the input of the GPS uh, navigator that you want. So let's go ahead and punch the CDI OBS button. And the source that is underlined in green is the active nav input. Now here you'll notice that the uh, EXT19, now that's the label that I have assigned to my internal GPS. I know it doesn't make sense, but it's just the way it is. Or I have my Gorman 650 is GPS number two. So here I am now navigating off of my internal GRT GPS. You'll notice also the bearing one, bearing two boxes. These are the uh, bearing pointers on the RMI, which uh, are the needles. <coughs> excuse me, are the needles uh, that are they're not depicted here. I have them both turned off. You can turn on where it'll point to GPS one, two, or an external nav source, or turn them off, and they're just regular RMI buttons 
on your HSI. If we are navigating on the internal flight plan, for instance, in this portion, I'm going direct to Bologna, Georgia, 9 or Alpha 0, and I want to insert Gainesville. Before that, I just go to Flight Plan and hit the Insert Before button. And that will bring me up the uh, menu down here, the options to type in my identifier. So I'm going to do KGVL uh, using the soft keys over here and hit Enter on the right knob. And it tells me what my flight plan selection is. Now you notice it's blue, it's internal. Lee Memorial, it tells me the name of it, where it's located, the bearing, and the distance to it. And that's what we're navigating to now. Punch the enter button, that activate, off we go. Now, that in, so I was going direct to 9 alpha 0, and I inserted a point before, so the flight plan defaulted to Gainesville, it still wanted me to go to 9 Alpha 0. I want to go to Gainesville first, it may be a destination change, so in order to do that, let's go down to the bottom and punch the set leg, and that will bring up a set leg menu where we can make the leg to Gainesville active. Here we go, we use the round knob at the bottom right, highlight the leg that we want active, so we want to go present position direct to Gainesville is our active leg, so let's highlight that and push enter. Now just as my technique, I like to have everything in the airplane navigating to the same place in case I want to switch between them or one fails or anything, anything that comes up where I need to quickly switch between sources, so I at the same time I'm going to go into my 650 and put in direct Gainesville and activate that, even though it's feeding my GPS at the time. Now, if I want to bring it back and return the nav source to the GPS, I once again punch the CDIOBS button. And I can set uh, nav2 as the active. Also, another detail that we'll just point out while we're here is in, uh, under the details, you'll notice it's got a PFD off, or it alternates PFD on, depending on if you select it. Uh, and it's other items down here that we can do in the flight plan page. But let's look at the PFD uh, and turn it on. Now it gives you a attitude indicator on the flight plan page, which is quite useful if you don't have a, another attitude indicator to look at in your IMC. Uh, it gives you the airspeed on the left, your uh, airplane indicator in the center, your altitude on the right, and then you're basically just looking at an ADI that is uh, on the flight plan page here. It's quite useful when you're playing with your flight plan or making changes and everything. Uh, when you're IMC, make sure the airplane isn't wandering around where you don't want it to go.